Um, so, I am the head of the department of obstetric and gynec and I am working in uh, CMP homeopathic medical college and I have a vast experience of treating gynec as well as obstetric cases which is very rare to be managed with homeopathy. We have a full, full fledged, uh, uh, we had rather, it is now really in a uh, last two years it has been uh, in a bad shape, but earlier we had almost more than 1500 deliveries a year happening in our hospital. And whenever medical part of the treatment used to be advocated, we used to chip in as a homeopath. Surgical part as you know, surgical part is a part by itself, you know, <coughs> where we do not have much scope. But yes, I have been uh, fortunate enough that we had such good setup and I have learned whatever I have learned, I have learned in my college. Hmm? Okay. So, let us start with the first slide. I think first topic we will start with is PCOD. Let us start with a very interesting definition. It is defined by one of my teacher who is no more now, but he was a well known gynecologist and by the definition itself you will know that it is a definition given by a male doctor, not a female. Yes, next slide please. So, what is the definition of a woman? There are multiple definitions. One is she is a biped who micturates once a day, who defecates once a week, who menstruates once a month and who parturates once a year. It is a very uncharitable and a politically incorrect definition. All the females out here definitely will agree with me. We do not belong to that definition anymore, but there is a big but out there. Why am I saying but? Physiologically, it is a very, very true definition. Whenever females have been postponing menstruation by the ways of occipals or preventing pregnancy for whatever reasons and not allowing that natural function to take place, that is going to amount in increase in a gynecological disorders. If you are aware, PCOS is increasing. I think Dr. Venkatraman must have talked to you. Now, 1 in 5 females in Bombay has some or sort of endocrinal problem. 1 in maybe 20 or 30 patients may suffer from fibroids in India, very, very common. If you get the sonography done of all 30 year old patients, at least 10 to 20 percent of them you will find having a fibroid. It may not be symptomatic, but this gynecological conditions or diseases are increasing when we do not look at the physiological function of the female. Next please. Now, I think the history has been mentioned to you. I was not aware that he is going to take about PCOD. So, I have mentioned little bit about the history. I think he has mentioned to you about the Sten Lementhal syndrome, who was the first guy somewhere in 1935. He realized that there is a raised LH levels that is luteinizing hormone. And with that, the patients were presenting with oligomenorrhea, anovulation, hirsutism, infertility, oligo ovulation that is again an ovulation and recurrent miscarriages. I think all the terminology has been explained to you yesterday, so we will go through it little faster. Next please. So, PCO is usually thought to be a lifetime female hormonal imbalance, where the maturing eggs fails to be expelled from the ovary, creating an ovary filled with immature follicles somewhat misleadingly called cysts and this cyst then contribute to the hormonal imbalance and this causes more cysts. So, it is a vicious cycle, multiple cysts are formed, they are not maturing, they are remaining in the ovary, they keep secreting estrogen that increases the LH levels, the FHS levels remain low, it does not ovulate and the cycle goes on. Patient remains amenorrheic patients have oligomenorrhea and if there is a breakthrough bleeding, then patient can have episodes of menorrhagia. So, that is a very, very vicious cycle. Next please. I think this also you have been taught, 60 percent of all anovulation women will have PCOD, 92 percent of all patients with idiopathic hirsutism. I hope you know what is the difference between hirsutism and viralization and hypertrichosis. They are very, very similar. What is hypertrichosis? It is a genetic inheritance where a female has in general more hair all over the body. It is genetic. It is nothing to do with the terminal hairs being very prominent, which happens in PCOD. While in viralization, 
it is a ma male pattern. So, baldness and she gets a hoarseness of voice or she has reduction in the breast size and that is a more male like feature that is viralization. So, this is how little difference between hirsutism, hypertrichosis and viralization. 22 percent of all normal female volunteers were found to have PCOD, very very strange which was not the case 20 years back. I am seeing gynec patients only in the OPD, there once in a full moon, once in a new moon we used to say one case of PCOD. Now I am seeing almost 1 in 5 teenagers in the age of 15 to 25 coming with PCOD, very very increase in the cases of PCOD. Nearly all patients of PCO have irregular cycles and one fourth of them, remember that is very very important. Not all of them will have all variations, some will present with only sonography finding. If you get investigations done, FSN and LH ratio which is suggestive of PCOD when the LH is more than 3 times to that of FSH or 2 times, ideally speaking normally FSH and LH are equal, 1 to 1 ratio. But when a patient goes into PCOD or where there is a full blown picture of PCOD, the ratio is reversed. LH to FSH is either 2 is to 1 or it is 3 is to 1. So, but that also is not seen in all patients, only one fourth of the patient will have this altered FSH and LH ratio. So, the picture can vary, patient can present with menstrual irregularities, patient can present with So, basically it is a hyper androgenism with chronic ovulation that is the symptom totality of PCOD and all the symptoms are explained because of either hyper androgenism or it is because of chronic anovulation. There is one more thing which is added now and that also has come in last few years. I think Dr. Venkataman must have talked to you about Heron syndrome. Can anyone tell me you just had a lecture yesterday, what is Heron syndrome? You have a pen or something? Hair N syndrome, H A I R A N syndrome. You just had a lecture 24 hours, not even 24 hours. H A stands for hyperandrogenism, I R stands for insulin resistance, and A N stands for acanthosis nigricans. That is a thickening of the skin? No, it is okay. Hyperandrogenism, insulin resistance, and acanthosis nigricans. So, that is a full form of Heron syndrome. Okay, so, that is what I wanted to tell you that few patients will present with this altered FSH LH ratio. Next, please. Presentation, I think that also has been done in detail with you yesterday, but I wanted to stress.